Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. The only way to describe a match I'm able to introduce the Terran player. In the red, in the top left, the underdog Terran, a normal man. And also, the reigning world champion. It's Olivera. And his dangerous opponent, but also his teammate. A 2019 StarCraft 2 world champion, and today, in my not-so-humble opinion, the most entertaining player in the world. It's the final boss. It's Dark, and that's enough of my introductions, because I think Dark is more than ready to make his. As we're starting off this series on Oceanborn, and already six Zerglings making their way across. Oliveira did not SCV scout, as evidenced by the Reaper continuing to head across the map, cutting a few corners. And Dark uh, may take some off of yours. Well, handful of Zerglings get into the base. No speed, just the slow lengths. Already getting one SCV, going to delay the command center. That Reaper heading back, scrambling, saying, I knew I forgot something. Forgot to send that SCV out, or decided not to. Forgot to set up the wall in a way that would make it easier to deal with the Zerglings. And most importantly, last but not least, forgot to remind Winter to beg for likes and subscribes. And uh, Jimmy, what are, what are we at? 1,190 likes on this video, on this cast, on this World Champion Showdown series. And, uh, I'll cast another series. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised at how often we're seeing these two nowadays. Olivera. Just in time for IEM Katowice to roll around again. Feels like he's stepped up his game, especially on the new patch, which arguably made Terran late game a little bit better uh, in some ways with a nerf to the Infester and an arguable nerf to the Broodlord and, and Lurker. I think we're seeing Olivera find more and more success. And honestly, being on a team with Dark and Hero certainly doesn't hurt when it comes to uh, finding some good practice. Cure formerly on the team as well for TVT. But Cure, good for him joining Team Liquid. But apparently not this match. I, what I, uh, Oliver's like uh, a classic Terran. Not, not in the uh, derogatory sense, though I'm not sure exactly how it would be. But instead, he uses builds straight out of like 2011. We've got Hellion Banshee after a Reaper Scout here. It's just going to play it safe right down the center. Doesn't even have a third command center before getting the Cloak Banshee. So that's about as safe as you're going to get. Uh, some players will cut uh, the Starport timing in order to get that third CC. Oliveira, on the other hand, is making sure he has the Banshee out. He knows Dark kind of sacrificed some of his own economy to get those Zerglings out so early. Well, uh, of course, he's able to get plenty of drones behind it. There was no gas until later on. And Dark's sitting at 50 drones and three bases. So while the Banshees are going to be dangerous... Um, is that a wall? It looks... It is a wall, it seems. The Zerglings. Dark is microwave the Zerglings, and he gets in! Oh my god, not again. Somehow the Zerglings get in. The Banshee tries to find some damage. There's a handful of Zerglings at home, but... He's going to roast some of the drones. And the Banshee should provide a hand, a bit of cover for the Hellions there. The Banshee, eh, not quite in range to be detected. Dark not handling it perfectly at home. Instead, focused on, on getting in past the depot with a surprising amount of micro. But Oliveira does end up losing a lot of his Hellions. Five Hellions down. And a, lot, a bunch of damage on the Banshee means that Dark is, is pretty much free to move about the map. As, besides the Banshees maybe poking and prodding at the fourth base, Dark already took the other side, hedging his bets. At least one of them is likely to live. As the drone count continues to grow, the Evo Chambers will complete. The creep spread. Spread. A as it does. That's, it's in the name. Oh, moving on. But Olivera has one one. He does have that third command center done. So he's not in a particularly bad position. It's just 
hasn't quite found the success in taking the initiative that ideally you'd like going into the um, higher economy phase of the game. Dark has the circling spotting for the base. Three drones have gone down from mostly the extraneous banshees. Olivera adding on barracks four and five. Landing his third command center. Meanwhile, Dark has finished a lair. Is this going to be one of those where he just decides we're going Zerglings and that's it? That's the entire strat? It's like, and then what? Okay, more Zerglings. And maybe if we're feeling crazy, a Viper or two, but <laughs> Dark sometimes does this and more than pretty much anyone else, he gets away with it. But deciding not to risk it on one particularly good Widowmon hit. Instead, something of, with a bit more stopping power. Hydralisks, combined with the Lings and Banes. They are a costly choice, but if Dark is able to get a 10, 15 or so Hydras out, that's enough of a core to drive back any sort of drops, any sort of uh, uh, split multitask sort of attack. Anything but a concerted, usually tank push, is gonna struggle against the Hydras. But right now, Dark is just punching him out. He's got 10 in production, but he doesn't have his upgrades done quite yet. Olivera finishes combat shield and 1-1 one -one simultaneously. He's got those Widow Mines on the ramp. I think Dark is aware. Another drop is headed in. Widow Mine drop heading for the alternative fourth. No drones at it yet. Armory is done. He's just going to go ahead and burrow. Anything to tax the attention here of Doug. Banelings looking to roll up. Hatchery taking a lot of damage. Widowmine is dealt with. And Oliveira losing a lot of those Marines, and the Queens will angrily drive the rest back. Dark slaps down one of the medevac drops, and he pushes back the Marines on the other. And overall, Oliveira's half-hearted attempt here. Is, is not going to make much progress at all. Infestation Pit is on the way. Olivera, this is not a loss for him to not find success here, but much like earlier, it is less, uh, at least right now, it doesn't really manifest itself as a loss. But in losing map control over time, that can mean Dark's counterattack is potentially game-ending. And Olivera, in making no progress now, is making it easier and easier for Dark to land a knockout blow later on. But, we already see the 2-2 halfway there. More little mines on the way. A few good connections can, de can definitely blunt the force of it. I wait, I love that depot. Simple geometry, just a straight line of depots. How many? Six of them. All right, this message brought to you by Home Depot. Bye today. Dark has a hive halfway done. No lurker den on the way. The banshees are still alive and still pokey and prodding, mostly to keep Dark busy and keep his attention, ideally, as far away from the push at the fourth base as possible. And so far, he's dragged the queens back, but Widowmine's not going to find too much. In fact, it looks like they got just as much of the Terran as they got the Zerg. Uh, Oliver ends up killing 26 Lings and 3 Marines. Dark kills 4 Marines, so about even so far that last fight. More mines dealt with. Another drop. Ooh, that's a good connection. Overseer taken out, but no more mines with this army. Hydralis speed, actually a little far behind in terms of upgrades. So Dark not going to be able to pursue off of the creep. Not that he's particularly interested. He's already got adrenal glands on the way. 2-2 two, two is about to complete, and Vipers, most importantly, are in production. Just two of them, but uh, sometimes less is more. Well, two is usually about the right number if you're able to keep them alive. Three or four can find use, but just making sure you got the parasitic bombs and occasionally the blinding clouds for this sort of unit composition is usually the priority. Banelings rolling up onto the creep. Olivera losing a bit more. Widow Mines, he's just sacrificing and trying to drag the mines onto the Marines, but it's not going to work yet. Olivera still holding on the edges here. Doing a great job of gunning down the Banelings, and suddenly the Marines will turn the tables. 
And without banelings, a whole lot of stutter step. Dark eats the mines. And Oliver is too busy micro on the right flank. Dark will slap him down on the left. And now the creep is most of the way across the map. Dark is going to be slamming into the fourth base. The fourth base is required for Oliver to really maintain this level of production. He's maxed out, but Dark has money in the bank. Olivera has that late game army though. He has what he needs to potentially push across the map. Dark, the only hive tech right now. Adrenal glands about to complete and the vipers. Whereas Olivera is halfway done with 3-3. Three He's going to have about a 30 second advantage. So not huge, but definitely something he can work with. And Olivera, army looking very strong here. Cutting off a couple of Widomans is Dark. The vipers. Looking for any opportunity. The Overseers, both sides suffering terrible losses at the start of the fight. Parasitic Bomb, gonna be added on. And more medevacs will go down. Stutter Step won't save you from this. The Parasitic Bomb will time out, but another attack over to the right flank. And Marines and Marauders take out a hatchery. Real damage being dealt here. But Olivera struggling to keep enough of his bio alive to follow it up. Dark swings in again and chews up a whole bunch of the bio arm. More Widow Mines in production, but Dark, more than willing to rebuild the Lynx and the Bane Lynx. He's actually hurting for larva. He makes a couple macro hatches. Uh, and by macro hatches, I mean just regular hatches. I take it back. But two hatches in production. The only reason he's not maxed out is the larva. 3-3 three, three is about to complete for Olivera. Dark not too far behind. Olivera needs to hold on to this fourth base. That's a lot of mainlings rolling in. I don't think there's any amount of holding he can do here. Plus three weapons done. Just a little bit too late. And 25 SCVs will pay the price as well. The deeper wall will hold. And I don't know if Dark realized this command center's out here. The command center will tuck back in towards the fourth base. So the lifeline for Olivera. He knows he needs to get something done. Dark is struggling for larva. He and Ricky! Ricky the accidental swarm host making a cameo appearance in game one. Wow, rarely do we see him so early in the series. And relatively early in the game. But Ricky, the harbinger of well, very little. It's not usually clear whether it's a, a good or a bad thing, but it is a thing. So, at the very end of the day, you must respect. Ricky's existence as mostly being there because uh, somebody had their larva selected when they were trying to A-click as A is the hot key to build swarm host. Not for accident. That's not what it stands. Oh, no. Speaking of accidents. Ooh. Dark splitting at the last second there. Only losing a Hydra could have been a lot worse as Oliveira has maintained enough army supply to be dangerous. Ricky with the army, ready to lead the charge. So that's not really how swarm hosts work. It often is for these ones. Widow mines hitting both sides. Hydras and Lings chasing. The motivational commander swarm host in the back and actually forces Olivera to abandon the attack. Is Burrow done? No, oh, he wanted to burrow the Lings. Doc, been making so much use of Burrow lately. But unfortunately, didn't have it researched. A bit of an oversight going into this stage of the game. And now Oliveira is setting up his defenses. Dark is in a bit of a dangerous position now. As Oliveira has survived the initial hive tech phase. And he's starting to build ghosts. He's got liberators. And he's getting another base. The Widow Mines, once again, splashing across the field. Hitting both sides. Ricky has expended his locusts. And will lead the charge, but pulled back at the last second. Another counterattack, trying to intercept Olivera. Able to gun down a whole lot of Zerglings. Another base vulnerable. This is an orbital. I think this is the main base. Ricky dies. The Changelings are... I'm not even sure if the Changelings are helping or hurting Dark here. And, oh, does he have enough Overseers? I think he blinded clouded mostly his own Changelings. And, uh, Dark may have a few too many overseers and a few too many changelings and i think he misread that fight just a little bit he fooled himself and Oliver now might have the critical mass he needs dark has been struggling just to spend his money 
for much of the late game here. He's at 2,000 minerals and 600 gas, but he's only at 138 supply. Just not enough hatcheries, not enough injects. Where are the queens? There are only two queens. They need to be re- I don't think he's rebuilt since much earlier in the game. Uh, clearly needs either more hatcheries, more queens, or... Well, I guess to lose some of his economy, which is not the ideal option. But Olivera is starting to make more and more progress as the income gap has closed dramatically. Olivera has established his fifth base. Dark is now lost. 4,000 more minerals and only about 1,000 more gas. Infestors are on the way. A more efficient use of that larva for sure. The go- wow. Where did they come from? Spooky. Ten ghosts on the field. We haven't seen a single one really used in the fights. But olivera has been banking him up for a while now. And, uh... More than happy to just sit back and play a war of attrition, because Dark has attempted to end the game, but not quite landed it. And that's, it's getting more and more difficult to see it being successful against this advanced Terran composition. But Olivera scrambles back. Dark hits the right flank, which is lesser defended, but has enough units to slow things down. Dark has another army anticipating Olivera on the other side. Widowman hits both sides again. The depot's holding. The Hydras, are they enough? Olivera worrying more about the left side. The Baneling struggling. Oh, you gotta be careful about that scan. Fungal comes out, he just secures the kill on the ghost. Hold position on the infester. Gets popped by a ghost. Widow Mines. Hey, he popped. Actually drawing the Widow Mine hits. A bit of an awkward fight. Both sides suffered terrible losses. But the Hydras ended up surviving just barely. Olivera trying to bring enough reinforcements to deal with it. Dark is maxed out. Kind of surprisingly not even reaching for the Lurkers. But the Hydraling Bane is better off against the Ghosts if you're able to get any sort of surround. He picks up the bio and evacuates his natural. Olivera not respecting the position that Dark has taken here. And now has a tough fight ahead of him. There's still a potential fungal on the field. That one infester catches a huge chunk of the bio. And the Hydra's lings and Banes close in and rip them to shreds. Those depots dying supply block to Olivera. He had like 10 of them at that base. A surprising vulnerability, but definitely you don't want to be remaking supply depots just to get back over 100. It's a disaster. Logistically and uh, more literally. As Olivera is unable to spend the little amount of money he has. His dark... His patience eventually pays off, if you can call it that. The Zerglings will suffer the mine toll there, but end up finding plenty of juicy SCVs to slaughter. And Oliver, he has uh, enough army supply to be dangerous, but far from deadly. GG, Dark takes game one. Looked like for a moment, he might let it slip. But he brought it right back. Hmm. A tough one. Bit of a roller coaster there. Oliver, though, for the most part, not finding much progress at all. It felt like the, the, the best chance that he had was dragging it to that late game scenario, which is how he's beaten Dark in the past. As Dark can sometimes get a, a little bloodthirsty I think is the best way to phrase it he can sometimes just decide to hold down the Z key until he runs out of larva which is surprisingly quickly quickly when you're down to two queens but at the end of the day he finds weakness and he drives the point home it is hard to get past that four base scenario on Oceanborn honestly the fourth base itself is hard to hold on to against the Hydraling Bane composition Oliver struggling to do so like, the, that was... The drops and the, the attacks were consistently very good, but not great. There was never that one drop that undoes the Zerg. Like, the Marines that just don't die, or the Widow Mines that find the perfect connection. Uh, Dark had more than enough against 
almost every medevac aggression. And uh, still enough to at least slow it down. I think the Hydras, as they often are, the real MVPs, um, they don't get enough credit. All right. I'll say it. I'll, I'll be so bold. I know it's not popular, but Hydras deserve more credit. They're surprisingly tough to keep alive. I think that, much like uh, Terrans and their bio army uh, in the later game, the Hydras are something that the difference between a good and an incredible player. Not sure what we're looking at here. Something weird was pointed out, I think. Hmm. It's very blue, I agree. Or, this time, Olivera scouting with an SCV to make sure that Zerglings aren't coming across the map. Anyway. But, Hydra's costing 100 minerals and 50 gas for quite a fragile unit. Uh, two Marines can pretty easily, with medevac support, take them out. Um, and obviously Marines cheaper overall. Don't cost any gas. Kind of crazy. But, en masse, as a... And he didn't even go Lurkers. So, Dark definitely leaning on that Hydralink Bane. Still finding success. Though the Bane Link's sometimes struggling to close the distance. That HP nerf in full effect. Get off my creep! <clears throat> Reaper coming in. Poking at the third. Dark going with his gasless three base. I haven't yet seen any other Zergs doing this. Um, at least not nearly as often. But going for... You saw the drone earlier scouting for proxies as well. But going for a no gas three hatchery build. Which is essentially to... Explode your economy early uh, if you can get away with it. You're, no one can, can build as many workers as the Zerg, uh, especially if you're able to get injects very early on. And in this case, since we're not going for an early lair and we have three hatcheries early, you have more queens. You have injects quicker, and then the economy kind of builds on itself over time. Of course, the main vulnerability is how late your tech is. Even if you end up getting gases, like Dark has now, and a Roach Warren. You're not going to have anything until at least five minutes or so. Gas-related. That means no lair for detection. That means no Roach speed, no Nidus, no Spire, which we almost... is rare, unless they go for battle cruisers. but, you know, I can dream. Eight Roaches on the way. Sloaches. Oh, 10 sloaches. That is a healthy number indeed. And in double digits is the makings of an attack. Less than that is essentially just trying to keep the initiative. Obviously, Roach is not bad against Hellions. Trade very well with them. Pretty bad against Banshees. They can take a lot of hits, but they'll never be able to fight back. The Banshee forces the Roaches to turn around, at least most of them. They're gonna scutter away. Scuttle? Scutter? I think that's a word. It's not right, but... They'll scuttle away, much like... Roaches? <laughs> One of the most aptly named units in the game, I think. Double Evo. Bio behind. Olivera. Adding on four barracks simultaneously. So going 1-1-1 one, one, one in the three base full range. I think part of it is these two known each other so well. I'm sure they've attempted to cheese each other. Mutas? Dark going from Roach into me. He's, he's getting his... I said I could dream, but sometimes your dreams come true. Oh, we'll see if he, he makes it there in time. As the big risk with Mutas 
the Muta Risk, if you would, is, is not being able to go on offense. They are just not a very good unit if you're pinned back and forced to defend. The best defense against the Mutas is a good offense. And losing that fourth hatchery is certainly not going to help things. Is there a main nest? No mainling nest, but he does have melee attack upgrades as well as... Ooh. The Banshee's going to get taken out. Oh, no! Not only will the Hellions make it into the natural, they're going to scout the Spire! Oh, it's a disaster for Dark! This is doubly the worst thing that could happen. Oh, no. Losing a critical mass of drones. 15 drones. It's not quite over yet. And getting the Spire scouted the moment it finishes. That is about as bad as it gets when it comes to... It, it couldn't be much worse than that scenario. Loses all the drones at a base. Seven mute is on the way. Now, I'm sure Dark is going to use that against him. Uh, Oliver knowing about the mutas means he can put up the turrets and he's probably going to play more defensive. Now the question is, does Dark continue down the uh, muta road? Does he build two baneling nests because he's kind of panicking a little bit because he knows how bad this is? Does he decide to switch up into Hive after the initial flock? Two out of three of those things have happened so far. A whole bunch of Zerglings on the way. But if he was hurting for Larva last game, getting your fourth base denied a scam. Well, the Muta's flying in, but the Marines are ready. The siege tanks are positioned. And Olivera is more than prepared to deal with the Mutas. Second Baneling Nest will complete. All right, the Roach Ravager. Olivera. Duck not even realizing there. That is more than enough army supply to make a dent. It's just going to be the first seven mutas. Just enough to be threatening. Force Olivera to at least respect him a bit. Oh, he's walled off in the rally point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nine SCVs? Wow. A surprising haul, considering... You know, everything really should have been locked down by now. But the Oliver's own, his own wall worked against him and uh, messed with the pathfinding of his SCVs. Left him vulnerable and now leaves him dead, which is not very nice. Plus one flyer attack on the way is Dark reconsidering the Mutas after finding some success. Making a lot of progress with a surprisingly low number as he builds up a huge ground army at home. It's the pathing for- it's this orbital! Well, here comes Oliveira. Tank push. From the high ground. Looking for an opportunity. A huge drop in the main though. Looking to divide and conquer. Is Oliveira. He takes out the lair. Very key at this stage of the game. Denies any sort of opportunity to go out to Hive. And also going for another base, Olivera, with a surgical set of attacks here, is going to take out the lair and slice off the economy. The brain and the arm here of the Zerg in order to get weirdly anthropomorphized uh, as Olivera. Wow, that went about as well as it ever could. Again. A follow-up attack could be deadly. As now dark, he doesn't have any sort of hope for- Look at that tank line! Mm. Beautiful. Keeping the mutas at bay. I think dark- Well, dark is almost forced into the mass muta now. He's got ten more on the way. He has no other ra lair tech he can really use. Oh, was taken out. That's a literal tank line. It's beautiful. It's like the, the cinematic. And yeah, he's going to take out a couple, but the concave favors the Terran, which is not really how it's supposed to work. A lair, a very weird looking lair indeed, but Dark is rebuilding it. But here comes Oliver, the Marines come marching in. Ugh. I don't know if the mass mutas are going to be enough. This is... This is a Wings of Liberty match right here. We've got Marine Tank Timing up against Mass Mutaling Bane. 
with Dark kind of stuck on Lair Tech. It looks like the SCV is not quite enough to repair. It comes down to whether Oliver is able to do critical damage with his push before the Mutus to uh, enough to counterattack. But 3-3 is on the way, so that's also a good timer for the Chinese Terran. 13 SCVs. The Mutus starting to really rack things up, though. A Thor is on the way. Another nostalgic choice. The tank push. Getting a little bit of uh, extra hastiness here. And here comes Dark with everything he has. There's not that many Marines to back this up, but the siege tanks are doing a lot of damage to the front line. The Marines will step up and gun down the Mutus. The siege tanks will be protected. And Olivera will claim game two. Ooh. We got a series. Hmm. I love Dark reaching for the Mutas. It just, it could not have been a rougher start. He woke up, got out of bed, fell to the floor, rolled out the door, tried to go to the bathroom, stubbed his toe, and uh, looked in the mirror and behind him, six Hellions. Hmm. Tough morning. Dark stumbling as he goes for the mutas and Oliver taking full advantage. It's one to one. We're all tied up. Going into, oh my, I'm surprised this map made it. Past the veto, Radisset Station. Now, so, this is the spiritual successor. It says it in the map description spiritual successor to King Sejong Station. Which was, uh, a, quite a unique map and uh, a popular one historically throughout Legacy of the Void and even Heart of the Swarm. <laughs> now, known for featuring a pocket base, an easily taken base at the back, mineral wall, and a set of rocks to protect it. Um, and of course, the natural is easily defended by a single ramp as well with a very long rush distance. Now, uh, somewhat unique in having the mineral line exposed like this. Meaning, drops, mutas, battle cruisers, just air units in general, anything that moves faster through the air than the ground. Well, most things move fast. It's easier to drop than attack by ground. Let's put it that way. Uh, so I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see more aggression. Looks like Dark actually going to take the pocket base with another three hatch, no gas build. Maximizing that economy early. Olivera goes Reactored Marine. Which is, uh, I think, his version of a safe expand. It's a bit greedier. Olivera's a very safe player. Um, not... There's a big difference between playing safe or defensive and playing passive. Olivera's certainly not a passive player. But is not going to risk his base, for the most part. On the off chance, he can do some big counter. Dark kind of forces the issue sometimes. Um, as he's more than willing to try to throw the game into a base trade. If the more conventional back and forth is not favoring him. But, Oliveira is able to lock it down. That was a beautiful response, too. Like, he handled that. About, eh, the, the, okay, he lost like 20 SCVs to views. It was, it was a solid. Much like everything about him. Very solid. Not perfect, but more than good enough. The barracks in flight. The Overlord reacts almost immediately. I think it may escape. Will he chase it down? There's always a risk. He's trying to come back. Will they, won't they? Oh my god, the barracks is coming back. The amount of... I mean, it's not a big deal. He's trying to get that high ground vision. He wants to bring it back, I assume, to get a... I assume that's a pervert pillar up there. We didn't actually check the vision. I love this little going on there. I don't know, they got some technology, electricity looking turbines there. That's how they keep the uh, station in space or something. A gravity generator. That's where I'm like an asteroid. I think about 50% of all StarCraft maps are just like a floating asteroid platform that somehow has gravity. Like, that's not... I'm starting to think this game is somewhat unrealistic. I don't know about you guys.
Meanwhile, Dark's tentacle balloon will continue to glide across the map. Looking for that third base, Oliveira. About to take. Dark has, uh... Ooh. Marines are dropping in. Hellions looking to get something done as well. I'm sure they are waiting for an opportunity. And again, the drones sensing danger, but are not the quickest creatures, so may not be able to evade it. The medevac is being targeted. Oliver is busy microing his Hellions. Down goes the medevac, just like that. A queen will die. The Hellions trying to line up the perfect shot will not quite get it at any point. Loses everything. Gets one queen, which probably shouldn't even happen, but gets one queen and four drones. That was a bit... That was not good. That was that was bad. I was trying to come up with something more clever, but bad will describe it. That was a waste. And now Dark, he's not going to counterattack. He's not going to do some sort of big timing. He's just going to take as many bases with as many drones as he thinks he can get away with. And that number shot up as soon as that medevac got shot down. I wouldn't be surprised to see 80 drones. Four or five hatcheries. And you know what? How many gases? Oh, he's gonna go mute us. Again! And this time, I don't think it matters if Olivera scouts it. Because all the map control is gone. There is no opportunity to either do more economic damage or really sort of pressure dark he might be able to send some medevacs out in a moment but he's only gonna have like there's not that even that many marines there's a dozen marines Olivera, a bit of a misfire trying to i think he, he was thinking about the map he's like what about a hellion marine drop kind of timing thing and uh well unfortunately queens exist and we're able to counter most of that spire's on the way dark is hidden it a bit more cleverly this time. 80 drones! <laughs> and counting! Wow! That, I mean... <laughs> it cannot be understated how important it is to not lose that much map control. Mm, this does not bode well. Oliver's best shot, though he doesn't know it yet. Wait, can you drop a tank? Well, nah, I was about to say something about turtling to the late game, but then I realized... Oh... Well, that's certainly a thing you could do. A tank jammed in behind the gas geysers. Covering for the drop. Now, those marines don't have combat shield or 1-1, one, one, and now eight of them don't have their lives. As Oliver gets another medevac. Get off my creep! You tell them, Susan. You get them, girl. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I blacked out for a second. Um, hmm. Tank push shut down. 11 mutas on the way. Oliveira boldly sending a drop further into the fray. I'm not sure it will last much longer here today. Not if Dark has anything left to say. The mutas will fly out. The medevac boosts away. Oh, well... At the watchtower, can see nothing coming to support him. There's still 81 drones. Oliveira has started his fourth base. And he's got 2-2 on the way, but he doesn't have nearly the advantage he's enjoyed in some of the other games. Dark has, what, 10 mutas on the field. Got flyer attack on the way. 11 overlords, which is altogether too many. But he's not going to be supply blocked for quite a while. He's definitely going to lose some of them as well. So Dark is too rich for his own good. Mm. Well, the Mutas on the lookout here. This is a Wings of Liberty match outright. The Widow Mines. Okay, Heart of the Swarm. The no Widow Mines being added in. Mass Zergling as well. I like 15 Mutas. That's the number. 15 Mutas with plus one can one-shot Metavax. They can one-shot Mines. I don't know the exact number, but I know 15 does it. 
more than 15 and uh, it feels like uh, a liability. You have so many mutas, they make up such a chunk of your army that it becomes all about keeping the mutas alive. Rather, oh my god! Another medevac. The amount of medevacs that have gone down with nearly a full payload of marines. That's a lot of banelings. 50 banelings simultaneously morphing. And, uh... Does Olivera have anything even remotely close to able to stop this? He has Widow Mines. I'm sure Dark is aware. A scan. An interesting choice here. I thought it was Dark Scan for a moment. The Banelings rolling in. The planetary just melts. The Widow Mines were all triggered. The Marines were stimmed a few too many times for their own good. Or a Widow Mine hit them. I'm not sure which, why they're in the red already. 74 more zerglings on the way that didn't actually we well, got the fourth he got the fourth and he cleared out most of the minefield so the fourth base is the key part of this if he can just keep hammering it then eventually olivera will crumble uh, sooner rather than later Olivera, i don't know what are you doing out here it's dangerous to go out on your own the creep is everywhere and the mutas will chase down the medevacs. He bought himself another 20-30 seconds, I guess. I have no idea what he expected to accomplish. There's a widow mine drop headed in. Maybe he can start to work on the economy a bit. Gets a few kills. Good target fire. Gets a dozen drones in total. Micros the mine a bit. Dark responds with 54 bane links for another round. Olivera, another planetary on the way, just in time. Dark trying to kill the baneling without, or trying to kill the mines without detection. Another wave. Dark coming in. Mines will burrow. Dark trying to minimize the damage. The mines aren't enough. The banelings roll in. The Thors will crumble. The planetary is the next target. Obliterated by the banes. And Dark with a vengeance. Is up two to one. Whoa. That is the difference between killing 16 drones and scouting the spire as it finishes, and killing four drones, losing all your Hellions and your meta. It is night and day. Dark, I'm sure, more than happy to play that game out, as you rarely get, get that sort of opportunity as Zerg nowadays. Hmm. A nostalgic game, even. Exciting to see. At least for I'm one third Zerg myself. All right. And we don't talk about the other two thirds, especially that other one third. It's not what you think. Yes, it is. It's Terran. Anyways, game four. On a cyclone. Alcyone. Oliver in the top right, dark in the bottom left. Olivera. I think he needs to stop getting in his own way. If he, he kind of just lets himself go to the late game, that last game, trying too hard. Trying to play the map as opposed to the opponent. Most of the time, playing the map is fine, but it's dark. He's not going to be... Uh... Like, he was surprisingly vulnerable to those Hellions on Goldnor because that was not a timing. That was just seizing the moment, the opportunity. Oliver came up with this reactored marine into Hellion timing. Clearly for the map. It, Dark was not having it. It's going to be a Reaper expand this time. An SCV scout as well. I don't think he'll make that mistake again. It may have just been a mistake in game one when he did an SCV scout. Okay, you'll get the greedy Terrans like Clem and Beyond. They won't SCV scout. And they'll just rely on perfect micro. But Olivera... Not a greedy Terran. All right. Beyond might be fun for a night. Clem, too dangerous to leave alive. But Olivera, that's who, that's who you take home. You put a ring on that. All right. Oh, well, he already has a ring. I don't, I don't think they give out rings for the championship. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is uh, if we were playing a, a sort of game, 
I'm dead. <laughs> Oliveira seems like a cool dude. Um, and before I make any more weirdly innuendo-based implications, SCV scouting is good for your health. Like and subscribe if you followed along, and like and subscribe if you didn't. And now I've covered all my bases, just like Dark. He's got his third hatch. Olivera 3cc. The Reaper, uh... Getting a little ambitious. Starport on the way. They're gonna have another macro game. Uh, I think now the question will be, how does Dark handle the mid game? As Oliver are likely going to be doing Cloak Banshee into Bio. The exact timings may vary slightly, but the theme will not. Dark, on the other hand, has shown uh, quite a variation himself. The Mutas, two games. Hydra's once. We haven't had a full-on Roach Hammer. Uh, we might be in store for it. Who knows, though? It might just be like a Queen Drop Nidus or something. Mass Zergling. Surprising amount of options on the table when Dark is involved. He started Burrow, but that was a misclick of the lair. We've all been there. <laughs> I was excited for exactly one quarter second until Dark realized he made a mistake. Oh, triple drones pop out. Hellions trying to get... Ooh, a triple bounce. Son of a... Is this a... This is a German taxi build. He's getting overlord speed. He's getting a quick glare. He's only got 45-ish drones. He's getting zergling speed. But the Overlord speed is, uh... Hmm. He did this to Clem on the exact same map not long ago as well. This might just be his his build on this map. Oh, it failed horribly. It's Clem. As well. But still fu Oh my god. Doesn't need all three. One Overlord can fit all the queens. Or four of the queens, at least. Surprisingly spacious. What are you trying to say? I mean, uh, the queen's small, so it can easily fit inside. Thank you! <clears throat> Dark. In the last patch, dropper lords technically got a speed buff, so they're about 5% faster than non-dropper lords, which is pretty cool. So these queens will be getting here with several more seconds to spare than they would have otherwise. The Hellions are on the other side of the map. It's just a bunch of Zerglings. The queens drop out at the natural. Dropping the creeps. Oh my god. The Hellions are actually headed back. They had an opportunity to dive in, but I think Oliver got so distracted by the queens knocking on the door. Brenda will have her revenge. Oh my, well, that's two bunkers. There are several Ravagers here, enough to really make a dent, but not quite one-shot the bunker, so... The Zerglings do have speed down. Gonna go for the tank, it looks like, or at least help soften up the bunkers. Scatters the shots. Actually takes out two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The bunkers are falling. There doesn't... Where did the Banshee go? They're two bit down the wrong side of the map. Oliveira, no! Dark with the queens to help things along. The queens are not a Vera's main. The queens are surprisingly strong counter to siege tanks. And the final boss yet again finds himself in a position to prove his nickname and his chosen style. Olivera just not reacting in time. Dark loses his third to Banshees, but Olivera about to lose his third game to Queens in his main. Oh my. 
he's typing something. He's got, a, you know, he's, a, he's trying to make the Banshees. There's that, whoa, there's no detection, but there's plenty of Queen. Five SCVs left. There's no cleaning this up at home. The Banshees will die. And with them, this world champion will fall to the former one. At least this time. This teammate. Now, where are you going? Come back here. No, no, oh, okay. All right. That is a float to the corner. I think he was considering it for a moment. I think right up until he realized the Banshees were dead. But Dark takes it home. Three to one. A Wings of Liberty sort uh, of mid-game combined with some spicy all-ins. And Dark with a comfortable 3-1 victory against Oliver's very sharp, yet somewhat inflexible Terran, at least today. Still, I had fun. I hope you did too. And uh, thank you for watching. If you have the means and motivation, also if you check out Patreon or YouTube membership, either way, I hear liking and subscribing is free, so that'd be awesome. Thank you for watching. Good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Stay chill.